Do you have high blood pressure? Did you know that high blood pressure can lead to serious issues with your eyes and lead to a loss of vision? This week, we're continuing our conversation with Dr. Larry Brenner to discuss that very topic. Dr. Brenner? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. All right, so today we're going to be uh, continuing our conversation with Dr. Larry Brenner. So Dr. Brenner, thank you for being with us again. My pleasure. So last time that we were talking, uh, we touched a little bit uh, about other health issues that could affect the eyes. And one of the things that you mentioned at that time was about the effects of high blood pressure on, on ocular health. And I thought we could continue that conversation today. So can we start out, first of all, by, by having a conversation about what is blood pressure and what are good blood pressures, what are bad blood pressures, and, and what causes high blood pressure in the first place? Um, blood pressure is, is, a, is a measure of the force in which blood is imparted um, through the blood vessels by the heart. Um, it, it has an upper level and a lower level. The upper level is called systolic, and that's a reflection of when the heart pumps blood uh, out, of its, out of its chambers into the greater vessels. The diastolic is the lower one when, the, when that, when that uh, epulsion is done and the, the valves of the heart close to allow um, no regurgitation of blood. So basically it's a valve system, out goes the blood, stops, the blood continues to go until it's ready to beat again. And of course, your heart's doing this whole thing anywhere from 60 to 80 times a minute on normal people and even lower in some. And it's, it's, um, it's, it's a very involved thing in terms of the way that the chambers work together and the valves work together. But the, the, the bottom line is it imparts a pressure on the blood vessels of the blood going through it. It's how they move. So I think we've all had our blood pressure taken before and you know you get those two numbers. Uh, so what is, an, what is an average blood pressure when we're talking about uh, those two numbers? Wide range of, of average um, depending a little bit upon the age. In our younger years most people's blood pressure tends to have on average, and again this is average, of a systolic in the range of 110 to 120. Uh, the diastolic in the range of 65 to 80. As we age, going first to adulthood and then middle age and then um, older age, uh, the, the, the blood pressure changes partly because of, of the inability of the blood vessels to expand as well. So it's, it's like passing blood through a more rigid um, tube. And so our blood pressures tend normally to rise. Now, I say rise because in the average person in say middle age, that blood pressure may be between 120 and 130 over uh, 70 to 85. We would accept those as normal ranges. When you begin to approach 140 for the systolic and 90 for the diastolic, then you're beginning to get into the high blood pressure range. So what causes, I mean, you've talked a little bit about age obviously affects it, uh, but a, a lot of times you hear um, dietary things or, or, or other, other causes for, for this high blood pressure. So what are some of those causes? I remember when I was in medical school learning about blood pressure and internal medicine, the first thing I learned is that we're going to discuss today essential hypertension. So I turned and asked the professor, what's essential about it? He says the term essential in this case means in most cases of high blood pressure, the exact cause is unknown. And to this day, most blood pressure, and there are, there are exceptions, but most blood pressure is essential, is unknown. Now, there's a number of factors that will cause that blood pressure to be higher on top of your essential blood pressure, and that is diet, obesity, uh, diabetes, um, salt intake, fluid intake, caffeine in intake, emotional upsets, and, and then of course if we get premature aging of the blood vessels our blood pressure may just go higher and higher and higher without a lot of those factors. Um, but 
it's, it's a multitude, and that's why it's such a serious disease. And genetics plays a big part, of course. So let's touch on uh, on that a little bit. So we, we've talked about uh, what blood pressure is, what causes blood pressure to change over time. But so what, Dr. Brenner? What, why does this matter? Why does high blood pressure matter? If I, I, I you know, if if the uh, if if I'm getting blood through there, I'm still getting blood. What, what's the problem? The uh, the vascular tree is built for basically normal blood pressure. It's not built for high blood pressure. So our vessels, when imparted to a, a consistent period of high blood pressure, begin to change, partly because of their desires to keep the blood pressure a bit down. And they do this usually by thickening. And so you have a tube with, let's say, a one millimeter opening that now becomes a tube with a half a millimeter opening. Well, that not only raises the blood pressure, but allows less blood to go through. So a person who's got high blood pressure and less blood is going through that tube, the heart realizes, hey, I'm gonna have to do something to make the blood get around to the body. I mean, it, I, want it, I want it to tickle the feet and the elbows and the brain. So I think I'll just pump a little harder. And that's what it does. And when it pumps a little harder, it works a lot harder and we age a lot sooner. And then you begin to get segmental changes in various organs that are susceptible to high blood pressure changes. The kidneys, of course, the heart, as I mentioned, the eyes, the brain. When this happens, then the tissues supplied by these little vessels, which now have higher blood pressure and a smaller lumen, begin to suffer. And it's called ischemia. Ischemia is an organ that is not receiving enough blood. And this is what happens. And it's often a gradual, slow, in some cases, very insidious change. So let's touch on that a little bit. Obviously, this is a, a primarily eye care focused channel. So what are the effects of high blood pressure uh, on the eye? There are several, but the main two, I would say, of concern 90% would be on the, on the retinal vasculature the blood vessels that nourish and are involved in the retina in the posterior portion of the eye, the back of the eye. And of course, the optic nerve, which is the last portion of the eye that exits to go to the brain. It is nourished by its own plexus of blood vessels. And if it doesn't get nourished properly, those one million nerve fibers don't like it. So if, we're, if the optic nerve is effective, affected here and uh, it's not getting enough blur, uh, blood. We say it, it doesn't like it, but, but what are some of the, uh, are, are there disorders that are caused by this or it, does it cause poor vision or what, what exactly happens when that happens? Well, let's, ta let's start with the retina because I think it's actually earlier. Um, in the retina, um, as these blood vessels thicken and the blood pressure rises, you, when you want a, want a, doctor, whether it's an ophthalmologist or a family physician or anybody looks into the eyes and can see well enough in the retina, it's going to notice there's some changes in these blood vessels. The, the, um, the little streak of blood that we see in the arteries, and by the way, the eye is the, is the only part of the body you can see these things going on yeah. in situ. And um, you see this, this, this little arrow, this narrowed and, and where the arteries cross the veins, the sheath gets thickened and it can actually compress the veins. This is why high blood pressure is, is the commonest cause of a very common disorder of the retina called branch vein occlusion, where you have a stoppage entirely through, a, through the venous system portion of the brain. And when that happens, of the eye, I should say, and when that happens, the retina that's nourished by that dies. And so you have segmental vision loss. Um, you also can see things in which the blood vessel wall is by its diseased nature is thinner um, in terms of its resiliency. The best example I can give you is diabetes. Um, diabetes, the, the little cells that line the inside of the blood vessels seem to disappear early. 
Not sure we know always why, but they do. When they, this happens, then su the support of the blood vessel, even in the face of normal blood pressure, becomes less. And you can have leaking of blood out of these vessels. And they do. And this is one of the hallmarks of diabetic retinopathy. When you see in the eye, you see leaking of blood vessels into the retina. And I can go on and on about what goes on on the next steps with diabetic retinopathy. And I think that's another subject. But um, so you can, you can see diabetes early, you can see high blood pressure early. And then when you get to the question you asked about the optic nerve, it's much more devastating because when this happens, um, it's usually not a slow thing. It's, it's, a, it's a buildup that you don't know is going on. There'll be suddenly an event that causes it really to stop. And you have a stroke affecting the optic nerve. That's called ischemic optic neuropathy. Again, ischemia, optic neuropathy. And when that happens, you get immediate vision loss. Usually partial, rarely complete, but significant. And when that happens, it's often, more than often, not reversible. And all you can do is to look carefully at the causes of it um, if a patient has high blood pressure, for instance, the first thing you think of, then, then uh, you have to treat the blood pressure to keep, first of all, the ischemia from getting worse and the other eye to get involved. Um, I must say that the thing that impressed me most by when I first got involved with neuroophthalmology was the frequency in which high blood pressure affected optic nerves and how many conditions I saw that I think were due to high blood pressure. Really? Mm. quietly and often the patient didn't know it or they they had high blood pressure and they didn't take the medicine or they had high blood pressure and it wasn't checked or um they high blood had high blood pressure and whoever checked it would accept it a higher blood pressure than they should i know patients who told me my blood pressure, pressure is fine it's 150 over 95. no sir that's not fine and so i would i often had to get on the phone and call their family doctors or their internists and beg them <laughs> to put them on stronger medication. And in a few cases, when I didn't get the results I wanted, I'd put them on medication myself. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I know the kind of person you are, Dr. Brenner, so I don't <laughs> doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. Brenner, I think it was interesting today that, that uh, we touched on this subject because I think it's something that uh, I certainly didn't uh, always make that correlation between high blood pressure and, and eye disease. Uh, but it is interesting to see that that, that, that is not, uh, that's not something that, that should be ignored. Obviously, there's a lot of problems that can come from high, uh, high blood pressure. Um, but I, I think we would all uh, say that, that our eyesight is something that's very important to those of us who still have it. Uh, and, and so it's, it's valuable for us to know how to protect that. And so it's very interesting to know that high blood pressure isn't just about, uh, you know, the common things that you hear like heart disease or other things like that. But there are other things that can be affected by high blood pressure. And in, in, in a lot of cases, this is something that's, that, that is very treatable, wouldn't you say? Yes. And, and this is the reason. Um, that I used to teach the residents and and also other practitioners, uh, ophthalmologists and optometrists, the importance of dilating the patient, looking carefully, not just looking, but looking carefully at their blood vessels and checking blood pressure in the office. When you do this, the patient realizes the most important thing that you do as a doctor for a patient is to make that patient realize that you care about them not just care about their eyes, but do you care about the person? And not enough of that is done in my opinion. Too busy doing refractions and contact lenses and cataracts. They're all important, but never give up that important thing. Blood pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure, and talk to them about it. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Brenner, thank you very much. Uh, I think next week we're gonna pick up and we're gonna talk about uh, high blood pressure's ugly cousin, which is the stroke. Oh, yeah. Oh, very good. So, Dr. Brenner, thanks again for being with us. Uh, and next week, we'll pick this up again uh, at the same time. Thank you.